Hi there, today we're gonna learn about pivot points in box edit. What we'll cover in this video is what is a pivot point, how to use rig hierarchy, where to position your assets pivot point, and then move on to a couple of examples to make everything a bit clearer. So without further ado, let's start with the first question. What is a pivot point? Pivot point is basically a center of movement and a center of rotation for your asset. So uh, let me just make an example here. If you want to check a pivot point of your asset, you can click on this icon here. You can reposition your pivot point uh, by selecting any of the three arrows and moving it up, down, left or right. Uh, also, you can see here the coordinates, so how many voxels uh, the pivot point is moved into each direction. And if you want to use the uh, snapping tool, you can hold shift while dragging and then it jumps into half a voxel increment. So that makes it a little bit easier if you want to find a specific position for your pivot point. So if you actually want to use the object that we have created in a Vox Edit Animator, we need to create a child node here under the skeleton hierarchy. So let's name this one pivot test zero. So now that we have our child node, we can drag and drop our model to it and voila. Uh, so this point is actually our assets pivot point and it's gonna make a little bit more sense if we use the rotation tool, which is up here. And you can see when we rotate the asset around, the only point that stays in the same place is the pivot point here. And here we can also uh, create an example of how pivot points affect positions and uh, rotations of our assets. Now let's also duplicate our model. So let's call it pivot test one. And then in this case, we're gonna move our pivot point to the corner. So let's move it all the way to the right. If we click here, we can see the pivot point is on the corner. And here we can see that the pivot point is in the middle of the longer side. And another thing that um, happens with this is when we want to rotate our asset, you can see here that the left asset rotates around the corner and the right asset rotates around this center point. And here you can see a side by side comparison of the same model uh, with just the pivot point offset. So as you could see, we use the hierarchy for our rigs and uh, why this is useful is because the child object is gonna inherit the position and rotation of the parent object. So for this example, we can just nest our pivot test one to pivot test zero, and it's still offset by the same amount, just right now it's comparing it to this position as opposed to this center right here. And what we can do here is if we move the parent object, uh, the child object is gonna move relative to it. And of course, if we select the pivot test one, we can move it relative again. And then if we select this one, we can keep them in the same relative position. Another thing that we can do with nested objects is that if we rotate them, the child objects will rotate as well. So as you can see here, and of course we can uh, rotate the child independently if we want to. So an important thing to consider when building your assets is where you actually position your pivot point, as you can see, it can uh, greatly affect how the asset is gonna move uh, when you try to animate it. So let's give a couple of different uh, pivot point examples when you try to rotate them. Now let's try rotating it some different way. So if we want to rotate it inwards, you can see it's nice that you keep uh, your pivot point at the outer edge so they are nicely connected. And here they're just gonna overlap and since they're the same color, it doesn't really bother us. But now if you see if we rotate into the other way, it's gonna create this gap here. So just keep that in mind. And now if we want to edit the pivot point of this object 
further, we can just move into the modeler, select our pivot tool, and then let's move it perhaps to the center of this axis. Right now you can already see that the object is offset by a little bit because um, of our hierarchy, so let's try to fix that. So right now you can see that no matter which way it rotates, it's gonna create a gap, but it's smaller than in the previous case because the pivot point is in the center of this line. And something happens, uh, something similar happens here. If you try rotating it upwards, it uh, stays nice and clean here because the pivot point is at the bottom. But if you try rotating it downwards, it's gonna create this large gap that can be visible here. So uh, we have already shown how different pivot points affect uh, the rotation and perhaps we can just go one step further uh, by making three of them. Okay, and there we have it. You can see that the models are rotating around different uh, points. Uh, so for the second example, we're going to create a simple arm that uh, is going to move around. Let's say we want to rotate this around a little bit. You can see that its child is also rotating the same way. So perhaps a little bit this way. And then let's rotate the child as well. So it kind of adds a new rotation on top of this first link's rotation as well. Okay, so now if you look closely, we have at the half of our animation this state. So it starts here and it ends here as well. And then it's going to move to this position. So let's just play it out and see how it goes. So another option of a kind of visualizing these node hierarchies um, that I like to use is using a nested circle creation. So uh, this is going to kind of go over all of the stuff that we have learned today. Uh, so here we have our segment of the circle. Now we're going to make it a little bit narrower just so we can see better what's going on. And then uh, we want our circle to look, well, it's not going to be a perfect circle because we're using like uh, these straight lines, but uh, we want to put the pivot point so it doesn't create those gaps that I have mentioned before. And in that case, we need to position our hinge or pivot point to one of the sides. So now let's start building our hierarchy. So you can see our hierarchy starts here and then continues here. And due to the position of our pivot point, it also looks nice without any gaps when we try to rotate it. So now you can see that the child is already positioned at the end of its parent and rotated by 45 degrees compared to it. So if we duplicate this node, it's right now at the same position because it's still nested to this parent. But if we nest the new node to this one, it's going to keep the position and rotation. We're going to move the model to the end of this side and then rotate it as well. So it's going to be perpendicular to this direction. Let's do it now. So you can see that we have kept the relative position and rotation of this one to this one. But now we're looking at this one to this one. And if we keep doing that, we can finish our circle really quickly. Well, that's more of an octagonal shape, but uh, you get the idea. So basically, if we used multiple segments with smaller rotations, we could do a nicer looking circle. But this just kind of shows the use of pivot points. And while we're at it, we can also test something else. What happens if we move the pivot points now? All of the initial positions are saved already. So we're just moving the model relative to that. So let's see if we were to move the pivot point to the center of this axis. You can see we still keep the shape, but all of the models are moved slightly outwards. So they are no longer connected right here and it creates some gaps. And then 
if we move it even further, you can see that the only point where the circle is connected is actually uh, where the pivot points are. So if we select it here, so you can see a little bit more nicely where the pivot point is, you can see it's the only point or the only line where two of these models are connected. So if you move the pivot point even further this way, we're just going to be making bigger circle with larger gaps. Or if you wanted to do it in a reverse way, you can just make the circle smaller and smaller, but because the lines uh, keep the same length, you can see they start overlapping. So you can even create something like this. So yeah, I think that's gonna be it for today's tutorial about pivot points. Hopefully you have learned something new or useful. And if you would like to see more videos like this one in the future, consider liking and subscribing so I know this content was useful to you. Thank you, bye bye.